Under the U.S. Constitution, government relations with Indian nations are the function of the federal government. In 1953, in violation of this responsibility, and without consultation with Indian nations, the United States Congress passed Public Law 280, which essentially delegated criminal jurisdiction over natives on Indian lands to some states. While this delegation of authority did not alter the authority of Indian nations in those states, it has had a devastating impact on the development of tribal justice systems and the safety of Native women. The transfer of criminal jurisdiction was done without the consent of tribal nations during an era in which the federal government was trying to extinguish tribes altogether, known as the Termination Era. Public Law 280, as originally passed, only applied to six mandatory states, Minnesota, California, Wisconsin, Alaska, Nebraska, and Oregon. Several other states later opted in and are known as optional states. And additionally, I also want to note that there are a handful of states that have a similar jurisdictional scheme to that in the Public Law 280 states as a result of state laws and land claim settlements. So of the 565 federally recognized tribes, the majority are located within states governed by a Public Law 280 or states similarly situated. Even though Public Law 280 involves solely the transfer of major crimes and criminal jurisdictions to the relevant state governments, and, techni and technically tribes within those states still maintain criminal and civil regulatory jurisdictions, tribes' hands in those states were essentially tied because since 1953, they have, had not, they have not had access to the same resources and funding to establish, maintain, and enhance tribal justice systems as tribes in non PL 280 states. Moreover, state governments often do not take the responsibility to investigate and prosecute crimes in Indian country seriously, creating a legal vacuum on the reservations where perpetrators can commit crimes with impunity. Many public law 280 states are situated along international borders which has inevitably created a gateway to human sex trafficking of Native American women and Alaska Native women on and off Indian reservations. The trafficking or transporting of Native women across borders to engage in commercial sexual act activities has often overlooked part of the epidemic of violence against Native women. Exact statistics on the prevalence of Native women in the sex trade are lacking because law enforcement generally does not keep appropriate records or track racial or ethnic statistics. Nonetheless, it is clear that indigenous populations on both sides of the border are among those most vulnerable to trafficking. I also especially want to highlight Alaska. Alaska has one of the highest per capita rates of physical and sexual abuse in the nation. Violence against women and children is being perpetuated in, commun in communities where there exists no form of law enforcement and no local infrastructure to address these incidences. The following are some examples of the barriers that face Alaska Native women in their efforts to live free of violence. Alaska is the home to 229 tribes. Of these, 165 are off-road communities, meaning that it is accessible by air only most of the year. 90 of these 165 off-road communities also do not have any form of law enforcement. When and if a community reports an act of violence against a woman or a child, it can take Alaska State Troopers from 1 to 10 days to respond. In some cases, it may take longer, depending upon the weather. As it stands, Native women and girls in public law 280 states are not able to feel safe because of the seemingly insurmountable legal barriers. Additionally, the failure of the counties to respond to or address calls for service creates a climate where adult rapists of 12 and 13-year-old girls voluntary, voluntarily seek to establish paternity of the children with whom they give birth. They do, not, they, they do so with the confidence that they can rape with impunity. The following are some examples of the barriers that Native women in the lower 48 face. Trouble law enforcement is not linked into the 911 emergency systems. Counties have used law enforcement compact agreements to threaten tribal law enforcement's criminal jurisdictions upon their own lands. Upon tribes using SecureNet, which is to access 911 emergency systems of the counties for calls that are dispatched, the county proceeded to dispatch emergency 911 calls via push-to-talk cell phones, creating a public and officer safety issue. When calls made to 911 for violations of order for protections, or the missing uh, of women and children, the response is often, we have better things to do with our time. Further, I want to raise the issues of missing and murdered Native women. 
Violence against Native women often occurs over the spectrum of a woman's life. Many times it begins during girlhood and, and continues until elder years of life. In this context, I want to share that today in the United States, this violence often takes the ultimate toll of ending a woman's life. Many times murdered victims are found and returning to their families and communities. Other times a Native woman goes missing and never returns to her loved ones. This issue is missing, the issue of missing and murdered Native women demands immediate attention and creation of a national protocol and system to monitor this horrific result of the epidemic of violence. We asked in a youth group, what would you do if you were raped? And a 14-year-old girl said, my mom and I already talked about that, that when I'm raped, we will do nothing about it because nothing is ever done and we don't want to cause problems for our family. When the issue of, in the Native communities becomes a matter of preparing your daughter to be raped, the U.S. has failed in its federal trust responsibility to our tribes. The U.S. has domestic and international legal obligations that they have ignored for far too long. We urge the Commission to hold the U.S. accountable for creating and maintaining a national human rights crisis where it is not a matter if a Native woman is raped, but when. Miigwech. Thank you.